Hello and welcome to a number talk. Today we are looking at the two digit by one digit multiplication problem of 18 times 5. What we do in a number talk is you try to solve this expression in your head. We use mental math, which means no paper and pencil. So I'll give you a moment to pause the video, solve this problem, and also think about how you solved it because I'm going to show you many different ways that you can find the answer to 18 times 5. So pause the video. And when you have your answer, unpause it. We'll look at our answers together. So 18 times 5, there are several different ways. And I'm going to just look at a few of them with you together. So let's look first. Some of you might have used the distributive property. And you might have taken the 18, and you might have broken it up into 9 and 9. So you know that 18 times 5 is the same as 9 plus 9, you took that 18, you split it up into 9 plus 9, and then what you're going to do is you're going to multiply each of those by 5. So that's the distributive property. You can take the 9 times 5, and you can add that to another 9 times 5. And you see what we have here is we've got 45, and we've got 45, and you put those together, and you got 90. So if you did 45 and 45, you used the distributive property. You can use the distributive property in another way as well. So 18 times 5, you might have broken it up into 10s and 1s. So with 10s and 1s, what we're doing is we're taking our 18 times 5, and we're going to take that 18, and we're just going to break it up. Instead of 9 and 9, we're going to do 10s and 1s. 10 plus 8, still going to multiply it by 5. So we're going to take that 10, multiply that by 5, and we're going to add that to our 8, which we multiply by 5. And so we're going to get 50, and we're going to get 40, and that's still going to get us our answer of 90. That's the nice thing about 18 times 5. You can use many different ways to get there. Another distributive property is you might have doubled the 18 and doubled it again and then added one more 18. And really, that's just the distributive property. So watch, we'll do the same thing again. 18 times 5, we're going to, instead of breaking up the 18 though, guess what we're going to do? We're going to break up the 5 into a 2 plus 2 plus 1. Really what we're doing is we are doubling the 18. So we're going to do 18 times 2. We're going to distribute this 18. And then we're going to add another 18 times 2. Then we're going to add an 18 times 1, which is just 18. So this 18 times 2, this is going to be 36. Another 36 makes 72. Add that last 18, and guess what you get? 90. Always getting 90. Now, some of you might have doubled and halved, and that's actually a pretty good strategy. Can't always use it. But what we know when we double and half, watch this. We're going to do 18 times 5. If we take half of one number, so half of 18 is 9. So you notice how we took this part off right here. We can actually double the other number. Double of 5 is 10. You notice how we took our 5 and we added this other section right here. Well, 9 times 10 is easy. That's 90. So it doesn't always work, but when you get a chance, see if you can double in a half. You take one factor and you cut it in half. And you take the other factor and you double it, and you still get the same answer, doubling and halving. Now, compensation sometimes works as well. So 18 times 5, well, that's kind of helpful. But really what we're going to do is we're going to look at 20 times 5. And we know that 20 times 5, well, what we did is we just added 2 extra. So that's really just 18 times 5 plus an extra 2 times 5. And why would we do that? Well, 20 times 5 is easy. 20 times 5 is 100. And then I know I've just got to take away this extra 2 times 5. So that's an extra 10. So I've got to get this 10 out of there. And guess what it's going to turn into? Back into 90. So that's compensation. You change one of the numbers into something easier to multiply with. So 20 times 5 is a lot easier. And then we're just going to end up taking this away at the end. 
Now we could use the associative property. Now the associative property is a little bit different, but it's a way of thinking of 18 times 5. And really what we're going to do is we're going to break up this 18 times 5 into 2 times 9. So we're not going to necessarily add. We're just going to change this 2 times 9 times 5. And what we're going to do is we're simply going to change the group. The associative property is the grouping property. Watch what I do. Since they're all multiplication, what we could do is we can simply change the parentheses. Look at that. I kept my factors the same. 2, 9, 5. 2 times 9 times 5. I just changed the grouping. And so now I've got two groups right here. And I've got each row has got 9. So I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 9 groups of 5. So what are my 9 groups of 5? Well, that's 45 and that's 45. So what we did here is we just changed the grouping or the association of the factors. We changed the 2 times 9 into a 9 times 5. We can also use the associative property a different way here because we've got our 18 times 5. There's a few different ways to make 18. Now 5 is a prime number, so we're not going to be able to break that up. But we can also do 3 times 6. If we did 2 times 9, we could do 3 times 6. And we're going to get the same results. So with the associative property, we're simply going to shift the grouping of our factors here. We're going to switch it to 6 and 5. So now we've got three rows, and each row, row has got six groups of five. I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So really, I've got rows of 30. And skip counting by 30 is pretty easy. So I've got three rows of 30, 30, 30, 30. That makes 90 as always. So did you find another way? Hopefully you did. And if not, well, then there are many other resources that you can find on my website, 5minutemath.net. If you did find another way, go ahead and drop that in the comment box.